All right, everyone. Um, welcome. Good afternoon and welcome to my talk. Um, as Christian already said, my name is Holger Kuhn, and I'm going to talk about Linux containers, what technologies and runtimes are out there. So just a few words about myself. I um, graduated in computer science back in 2009 and since then working as a senior systems engineer uh, for a company in Tübingen, which used to be small, um, as a senior systems engineer. Um, the company used to be called uh, Science and Computing and um, was rebranded last year to Atos and is now um, part of the big Atos family. And um, yeah, we're dealing there, as Christian said, with customers from, from automotive all over Germany and um, support their workstations and um, HPC installations locally. And as a nighttime job, I'm a, a research student uh, at the Institute for Cloud Computing and IT Security in, uh, at University of Furtwang in cooperation with Plymouth University. So what am I going to talk about today? Um, first of all, I'm um, going to give a brief introduction, including the core technologies for, uh, for containers. And in the second part, I'm going to talk about container runtimes for Linux, um, which are available. And then conclude, yes, of course, with a small summary. So, introduction. Um, just, um, yeah, to get you all on the same page, what are containers good for? Um, they're great for isolating dependencies, conflicting requirements, um, which can be quite troublesome um, if you have to provide dozens of uh, versions of a single application. Um, different um, applications with different requirements or running legacy code on modern operating systems or the other way around. So, in general, they're great for shipping code of any kind. Um, if you have more rather complicated workflows, um, this is extremely useful. Um, for example, if you have a rather fragile workflow uh, where you have need this spe uh, specific version of Python combined with this exact version of, of NumPy or something, um, and yeah, the installation um, guide would be to never touch your system again after you get it working, um, freezing something in, inside the container image and, and using this um, for later reproducibility of your um, results, this is just great. And containers also add flexibility at HPC environments where you don't have tons of systems to choose from and you have um, yeah, conflicting requirements. So. Um, containers are quite popular in all fields of science at the moment. And um, another point, um, the aspects I talked before, um, you could also do with regular uh, type 1 hypervisor virtualization. Um, but the thing is, um, the performance for, for um, with containers is much better. So um, if you take a look at the comparison uh, at the IBM Docker paper, um, their, um, yeah, their key takeaway point is that Docker-based containers equal or in most cases exceed KVM performance in every use case they tested and well, they did quite a few tests there. So, um, what is different with containers? Uh, on the left you see the traditional stack with hardware uh, on which a hypervisor runs on the VMs, including um, a separate guest operating system uh, running an independent kernel and guest operating system. I'm repeating myself. Um, the binaries and library which belong to the application and on the other side, um, you have the container approach, um, where all containers running um, share the same host kernel, and the containers only consist of what the application needs to run. So uh, in case you want to ship more or less just an application with its dependencies, you have a much um, larger entity, to, uh, much smaller entity than with VMs you, you have to ship here. So please keep in mind, um, yeah, containers are no magical virtual machines, but something different. And um, if we take a look at the history of operating level virtualization, um, it basically all started with change root uh, on, on Unix-based systems, and then you had jails on, in BSD. Um, in 2002, the early work on the Linux namespaces, which is one of the cornerstones um, of um, container-based virtualization on Linux, uh, was started, and um, yeah, added more were added up in 2006. Um, then we had OpenVZ and vServer, which were more or less um, the basis um, for, for LXC and so on, the Solaris side of things. Um, we, had, we had the zones, and um, then 2006, um, the three groups um, were developed um, to yeah, put resource constraints um, on, on processes. And 2013, um, the big blue whale appeared. Um, Docker, which was initially based um, on LXC, and then later uh, moved its functionality into libcontainer. And then we have um, Rocket, um, which came along 2015. So um, the good thing about containers, or the noteworthy thing about containers is they are yeah, more or less just built 
um, on, on existing kernel techno uh, technology. So they're nothing really fancy, shiny new, which is deeply integrated um, separately in, into the kernel. Um, but yeah, it just uses um, already existing components um, and can also be used independent of containers. So um, there's a nice talk from Jerome, one of the leading developers um, of, of Darko, um, where he summed this, this whole thing up and um, needed uh, used this as a proof. Um, he, he grabbed more or less through the kernel, um, through the kernel um, source code and looked for LXC. Um, so there was no result, um, which showed that LXC is somehow integrated into the kernel. And then he went looking on for containers and found, yeah, quite a few results, um, but these um, related to data structures inside the, um, the kernel and had nothing really to do with this, what we mean with Linux containers or Docker container or whatsoever containers. So um, more or less container is just a term people use to describe the combinations of Linux namespaces and C groups, um, which are both um, features that can be used standalone. So um, namespaces are used for producing um, the illusion of, yeah, you have the system all by yourself, isolated um, operations or namespaces. You start with no isolation um, from zero and you add whatever namespaces you want, mount, PID, network, host name and so on. And um, while the current set of namespaces is more or less adequate, um, for example, we have the PID namespaces, which ensures that inside a container, you only see the um, processes running inside your container and not of the host system outside. Um, there's, well, certain room for, for further improvement and additional namespaces. Uh, for example, a, a time namespace or a device namespace. And on the other side of things, we have the C groups. Um, which are means for limiting resource usage, for example, ensuring that um, one container does not eat up um, all the CPU or memory of the whole system and thus crashes um, yeah, the whole system. So keep in mind, these are technologies which are out there for quite a long time and can be used independently of, of containers. So what container runtimes do we have? Um, first of all, we have Docker. Um, which is currently um, around after quite a few few years. And um, what is Docker actually? Um, the question sounds quite easy. Um, the answer is depends more or less on the time. Um, the thing is, um, the whole thing started um, as an engine for for pass environment based on LXC, and um, the company decided, oh, okay, people like this thing, and um, let's hold our, uh, let's sell our pass um, business and um, rename ourselves after this small little engine. Um, the wrapper around LXC, and um, so this later became the name of the company, initially the, the engine, and um, now they're talking about the whole platform, which is also their self-description that they are the world's leading software container platform. So if you take a look at the platform, it's not just the Docker Im uh, engine now, um, a small building block, you have a complete set of architecture and stuff you want to integrate. I guess Christian is going to talk about this later, but just as a point of what, what I mean with platform here. Um, yeah, and due to this, some fear that um, Docker might become the new old Microsoft um, in terms of Microsoft including Internet Explorer um, into, into Windows and thus killing off Netscape. Um, as Docker, I think it was last year, had the move of including Docker Swarm, so the scheduler into the um, Docker core and trying to at least um, to a certain extent um, hurt Kubernetes, Mesos, Marathon, Nomad and all the other schedulers. So. Um, the integration of such a scheduler um, with the core makes sense to a certain degree as um, shipping a browser with an operating system makes sense. Um, but the fear is, um, or, or some people just fear that this might um, rise um, certain problems. For example, when you're talking to a customer and he wants Docker and he needs a scheduler and you have to explain him why um, Swarm, which comes along with it, is, is just not sufficient for his use case. and. Um, such bundlings is yeah sort of a problem. And um, another thing is um, Docker bi uh, Docker's business model. Some fear um, yeah that they created sort of a lock-in effect um, because they had this engine everybody liked, and on top of this built a whole complete ecosystem, and now um, more or less selling this um, complete suit um, for money because um, yeah it just adds um, added value over just the engine and. Um, Docker's strategy to, to cope with that is um, that they are now um, trying um, more and more to decouple their plumbing, so all the components um, that you can use. Um, there's a 
Yeah, so that in the end you, you don't have to use Docker to start Docker containers. There's this nice talk um, where they even explain where you can uh, more or less um, start Docker containers um, just based on this plumbing. And um, the thing is they are currently um, forking out or spinning out as many as of the underlying components as possible. So for example, we have container D and run C, which I'm going to talk about a bit later. We have lit, lit network, um, SwarmKit, Notary, InfraKit, and all these components can be used in, in separate or in other projects. And um, so their opinion is that um, just by using this plumbing and not the whole um, Docker uh, enterprise, whatever set, um, you're improving their solution. And um, so it's a win-win situation more or less. And um, yeah, the first steps um, to break Docker into smaller reusable parts um, is, is um, splitting off or um, basing the thing on run C and container D. And um, the idea is to have these more or less static in the development um, components um, to be integrated in, in other solutions. So uh, if you want to, to um, have your own scheduler or something, you more or less um, use these components here. So um, first of all, we have run C, which is um, the low-end uh, container runtime executor, so more or less a command line interface for spawning and running containers. And it's the implementation of the open container um, initiative specification uh, for container runtime. So the initiative uh, itself was, was founded by Docker. And um, yeah, with the aim to, to have certain common standards for all um, yeah, container ecosystem solutions and provide uh, on and avoid uh, potential uh, fragmentation. So the cool thing about run C is, is that it can more or less be used standalone by foot to start an image. Um, the process is not really end user friendly, um, but well, it's the thing you might want to do um, in case you want to integrate um, this component into something bigger. And um, the good thing is it's all based on libcontainers. So all the magic um, for isolating containers is available as it's yeah, just included in libcontainer and will work out of the box. Um, then we have container D, um, which is more or less a daemon to control run C. The sticker says it's a small, stable, rock solid container runtime. And um, yeah, the cool thing is due to the split um, and having separate components, you now uh, can restart or, or update this daemon without terminating the container, which is a yeah improvement in usability. So um, container D as run C is also more or less designed to be embedded into a larger system and also not really be used directly um, facing the end user. Um, the other nice thing is it was um, donated to the Cloud Native um, Computing Foundation um, as is Rocket. So now we have um, two um, runtime environments um, under the same hood. And um, also um, with the Cloud Native um, Foundation, we have Kubernetes. So um, it seems like um, Docker is um, giving it there. It seems like Docker's approach to say, oh, look, we mean no harm. We play nice along with all those other components here. So um, yeah, the new archi architecture now looks this way. Um, we have a, um, yeah, the, the user can still use the same Docker user interface and commands. Um, this interacts with the Docker engine. Uh, the engine communicates with container D. Um, the container D spins up uh, run C or potentially uh, another um, yeah, OCI compatible runtime um, to run containers. So um, this part, this run C part, um, is really nice to be, or is meant to be interchangeable. Um, for example, if you have a certain use case where you might have an, a, a different container executor, you can just plug it in there, more or less. So um, another thing um, they did in decoupling the plumbing is, is the approach to have Mobi besides of Docker. And um, it's more or less an open framework um, for building specialized container systems based on Lego blocks, they call it. And it's more or less um, like, a, like, a, like an upstream project and shall lead to further breaking down of, um, yeah, of Docker in parts and making it just more reusable. So um, keep in mind, this is not really meant for the end user. It's more or less um, designed for system engineers or integrators who want to build uh, different components around um, the Docker, um, yeah, parts more or less. So another thing um, which people in the past did not really like about Docker was security. I'm going to keep it very short. Um, I could talk about now like for this. Um, a good thing is, um, which is also um, a kernel component, is that they support second profiles, um, which is basically um, um, yeah, a mean um, to um, block certain syscalls uh, um, that you, are cons uh, you consider to be dangerous. And 
um, also keep in mind this feature is also available with, with Rocket, so it's nothing really um, Docker specific. But as I said, the good thing is, this is one more thing of reusing existing kernel components and um, improving containers with it. So then they also have support uh, for the user namespaces. Um, at the moment, only phase one. Phase two, which has better support for multi-tenant um, environments, um, is not finished yet, but will hopefully someday come. And um, there's even more out there. Um, last year, I um, yeah, took the effort to collect what's out there and how you can attach it. And this is just meant as a starting point if you decide you want to look into this and um, how you can secure your Docker installation. And in the future, they're working towards fully unprivileged containers, uh, containers start up by non-root users um, without uh, privilege escalation. There's lots of development ongoing, for example, there's a pull request and there's a talk um, about rootless containers with run C um, you can check out. Um, please note, um, yeah, in the footer I always, uh, I, I often included further information because time is a bit short at the moment, um, then um, yeah, they're working on towards activating more security features by default. Um, they've got a lot of stuff um, which is included, um, yeah, but not active by default. And then the phase two of um, the user namespaces. So what alternatives to Docker are out there? Um, first of all, we have Rocket. So the main motivation um, for Rocket uh, is, is this quote from core SEO Alex Polvi that Docker is fundamentally flawed. Um, he came to this notion because, um, well, in 2015, I guess it was, they saw that, okay, Docker is not just this small engine as it um, yeah, promised in the first moment, and, and they're seeing, okay, there's a market for, for, a complete, uh, for a complete stack, for a complete platform, and um, this is not what we want. Um, we want something smaller, and um, we want a top-notch, um, yeah, um, system oriented container runtime for Linux, and this is why they started um, working on, on Rocket. So Rocket is not a Docker fork or something, it's something completely new. Um, the sticker says it's secure by default, um, okay? And um, for example, it includes um, support for executing pods um, or containers within a KVM hypervisor. They have uh, as a Linux support, signature validation for the images. These are all features besides the KVM hypervisor support, which Docker has too. Um, the cool thing is it can run Docker images, so they support their own um, AppC format, they support the Docker format, and the OCI, um, which is a standard um, yeah, um, image format, is also supported by them. So um, you can more or less um, use this as a yeah, straight um, alternative to Docker, at least if, you, if you're talking about Docker as, as an engine and not as a platform. Another thing is it's very Linux oriented, so um, you won't have any uh, Windows or Mac OS versions. Um, and um, yeah, the thing is Docker makes it easier for developers with tools like Docker for Mac, Docker for Windows, uh, to get for developers something working. And um, this is not that much considered um, by, by the Rocket guys. Um, also, third-party support is falling back a bit, um, so there are no real ready um, third-party commercial um, images or whatsoever uh, available for Rocket, um, but as I said before, um, they can use Docker images, so this shouldn't be m that much of a problem. And also it's a project at the um, CNCF, and um, people were thinking about merging uh, ContainerD and Rocket, but in my opinion it doesn't make that, that much sense, it's because they're all um, yeah, going a bit in, into different directions, and um, we would probably end up with a, with a third container um, runtime under the hood of the CNCF. So um, another thing which is around for quite a bit, um, some time, um, LXC um, should be around for, for like 10 years or something. And um, yeah, the easiest description is this um, from their um, documentation. Um, to offer an, an environment um, as close as possible to virtual machines without the overhead by, by a hypervisor. So um, yeah, the, um, the idea is for Linux containers started with, with the Linux vServer project. Uh, it was originally developed by IBM, is now um, more or less driven by Ubuntu, and um, don't touch it. <laughs> We've uh, somewhere in the pipeline a problem, not, it's not with the Beamer. Um, so on the initially, um, Docker was also based on LXC. Um, but please keep in mind their concept is much closer to virtual machines than to Dockers are, and um, 
their idea is more or less to provide operation system containerization versus application um, containerization. So, um, yeah, it is less living the one application per container mantra or whatsoever, and they have like a, a different approach or, um, yeah, direction um, like Docker has. Um, but what they also have, um, perhaps um, Burak um, could, could um, tell about um, LXC a bit more, um, using it really practically. As I heard, um, Docker, uh, not Docker, uh, LXC is also supported by the Uber Cloud now. So perhaps you can shed them, uh, some light there. So um, what we also have is LXD, which is more or less a LXC hypervisor. And um, it, it offers a REST API for managing containers and um, is integrated in OpenStack. So as an alternative to a classical virtual machine um, in, in OpenStack and um, you can yeah, see more or less like a Docker for LXC with similar command line options, uh, support for image repositories and other container management features. So then we, uh, to conclude this more or less, we have systemd uh, and spawn. Um, and yeah, let's say this way, the functionality is more or less limited, um, but might be sufficient in, in, in some use cases. So if you just want to, um, yeah, spawn spawn some na uh, namespaces around a con uh, around a process. Um, you might want to use this, but um, yeah, it only handles process isolation. So um, yeah, no real resource isolation like memory, CPU, etc. And you don't uh, also get um, yeah um, ready to run images. You have to do uh, most of the steps by yourself. So it's more and less end user friendly version of um, of, of um, run C or something, and it's much. And a less end user friendly than Docker or Rocket is. So, and it has no, no manager around it. So, um, the alternatives for HPC, I hoped that Michael would include uh, a few sentences about Shifter, um, but um, what he will do is um, talk quite a lot about Singularity. This is why I'm going to end here and um, yeah, give the stage to him. So, the summary um, as a quick uh, decision helper, um, as a yeah, showed several alternatives to Docker and what is what is out there. If you just want sort of a platform um, with integrated um, with with a with a scheduler, um, if you need um, perhaps some enterprise ready support, you might want to stick with Docker. Or, for example, if you have need one solution for different use cases, you have big data, you have I don't know HPC, you have something completely else. Um, you probably want to go with Docker. Um, if you want to integrate Docker into something bigger and into your own product or something, uh, you might want to use Docker low level. Um, if you want a general purpose alternative to Docker or just are confused by Docker because every day or every week something is changing here and new products come along, you might want to try out LXC, uh, Rocket. And LXC is the thing if you want more system, not application um, containers. So, and um, yeah, if you want Docker low level, which with much lesser features, you want to use system B and spawn. And um, if your other computer is a gray and you do want something like containers, um, you might want to give Shifter a try. And if you do HPC and basically only HPC, you want to stick with Singularity. So to wrap things up, containers are based on existing Linux kernel features. They are not something completely new, um, fancy, <coughs> shiny, and have been around for quite, a, quite some time, or at least the, the technical basis um, of it. Um, there are several viable um, options um, out there for, con for containerizing workloads. Um, for example, Rocket, um, which is quite yeah, usable um, now and um, yeah, is, is considered to be production uh, ready by many. The thing is, it's Linux-centric, so if you're developing code um, on some other platform than Linux, mm, it might be less attractive there. Um, but the very good point is, um, like AMD and Intel, it's always um, good to have a strong com competition around uh, to keep the monopolies sharp. And so um, Rocket shall last forever. Um, I don't know, at least uh, as long as uh, uh, Docker is around. And, um, yeah, breaking Docker into smaller reusable parts um, definitely makes sense and um, helps other projects um, to to yeah work around this. So um, and um, if you just want a containerized operating system instead of um, an application, you want to use uh, LXC. And um, finally, Docker security has strongly improved. And in my opinion, the war about the containerization solution is more or less won, but it's now moving to a different layer. So. 
in case anybody should be in Tübingen next month, uh, next ne, this weekend um, we have a Linux talk there, and um, I'd all uh, I'd like to invite you all to come there. And um, otherwise, do you have any questions? Any comments uh, on Charlie Cloud and U Docker as alternatives to Shifter and Singularity? Not for me at least. U Docker? No. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm not aware of, of U Docker at the moment. Uh -huh. um, I'm busy with all the, the other stuff, um, but um, yeah, we should talk later. Um, this okay. might sound this might sound interesting to check out. So, in case there are no more questions, um, feel free to talk to me later, and um, otherwise, thanks a lot for your time. Yeah, thanks, Holger. Yeah, sorry for the flickering. I, I blame Windows. Um, <laughs> it's always a good thing. I have